Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. In the last episode, we beat the game. Hooray! It only took us a whole year. And in this episode, we are going back to Rogueport to settle some unfinished business. Let's head into our completed save file and return to all of our friends. You're a strange one, sir. It must be something special to convince you to return. Although, if I had a Goomba that cute waiting for me at the dock, I might return too. Well, whatever you're doing, be careful. Goodbye, sir. Long time no see, Mario. I'm totally glad I got to see you again. This is awesome. Everyone's ready. We heard you were coming, so we've been waiting here for you. So, are you ready to go? Wherever you want to go, we are so there with you. Yes, all of them are back with us. We got all the we got the whole game back together again, and the world is our oyster. So then, what are we going to be doing here in Rogueport? There are some new things that are opened up to us, and you can just go about your business, whatever you want to do in the after game. It's all up to you. If you just want to exist in this world, you're allowed to do that, which is great. Something I really wish that the original Paper Mario game let you do. But first and foremost, I think we all want to know what was in that treasure chest that Professor Frankly found. So, let's go over there. And in case you're wondering about the Palace of Shadow, you can go all the way back there and walk around in the final boss room if that's just, uh, your novelty, I guess. But it's really not worth your time. There's literally nothing there for you other than just the... Joy of walking around in a room that was once only walk only available to you in a cutscene. That's about it. You seem pretty cheerly, and as always, I'm happily busy with my research. By the by, do you know what was in the treasure chest we found in the palace? It contained... A dried shroom! Oh no, it's nothing to be disappointed by. Now we know for certain that people indeed ate mushrooms 1,000 years ago. This is a groundbreaking anthropological discovery. This would normally be a moment where I would freak out and get mad and all that other stuff. But I want you to think for a moment. Some people think that it's just a joke. That the legendary treasure ends up being a dried shroom. Ha ha ha. But the truth is this. Yeah. That's why I was freaking out! The treasure chest at the end of the game contains the dead body of one of the legendary heroes. I have never heard anyone mention that before. I think I'm the first. And if not, then I'm just gonna sound really lame. But seriously. That is what is in the treasure chest, not a dried shroom. It is the dead body of a fallen warrior. <gasps> that is crazy. Nintendo does not have the balls to do this again. Okay, now that that's taken care of, I wonder if she has any more stories for us. I don't think she will, but couldn't, couldn't hurt to check. Let's go over here. And see what she has for us. She has nothing, okay. And aside from the two times I healed, you could get over 400 coins by fighting all of the enemies in the Palace of Shadow. So if, you, if you're short on money and don't wanna go through the pit of 100 trials, I guess that's your best option. It sounds annoying, but you're at least strong enough to defeat them, and if you get stronger and stronger, use the first attack badge so you could take them out uh, without actually initiating a battle. So that's good, at least. 
But other than that, what are we going to be doing? Uh, first off, I'll tell you the things that we won't be doing in this episode. First off, the Trouble Center. You're going to be saving this for a live stream. I may or may not have already done it, depending on like what I end up doing. Uh, hopefully, I would have made an announcement video for all of you, so you would have been able to see it. But it's going to be posted after this video, in case you missed it, the archive stream, if I ended up doing it before the LP finished. If I still haven't done it yet, then it's going to be happening in the near future, where we go over all the troubles that we haven't done. It's going to be a fun time. The other thing we'll be doing in that live stream is the cookbook. I want to go ahead and cook every single recipe in the game. So we're going to go on a treasure hunt looking for all the food in the world so we could have a 100% complete cookbook. The third thing we're going to do in that stream, I don't know if it's going to be all the same stream, but the third thing we're going to do on a stream is the Pit of 100 Trials. Oh boy, that's going to be a trip, but we're going to do it. Don't you worry, and if I've already done it, it will be uploaded sometime after this video. Don't worry about it being lost forever and not being able to watch it ever again. We will be able to watch that whenever we want at some point. Oh yeah, we're also going to do the Pianta Parlor because there are some badges. Actually, I think there's only two badges that are exclusive to the Pianta Parlor, so we will be doing that during a live stream. Oh yeah, there's also the Glitz Pit rematch we could do. That is available to you after chapter 6, but I am going to be doing it as well during a live stream. I might save the final boss for a video, I'm not entirely sure yet, but uh, we'll go ahead and see about that. But with all that said, there are some areas that I'd like to go ahead and visit. So, I'll go ahead and meet you at our first stop. Whoopsie doopsie, our first stop is actually here at the bookstore because there's another copy of Super Luigi here for us. Coming soon to theaters. <laughs> Gonna need 256 coins for that, jeez. Why don't we get a, like a brotherly discount or something like that? We might not even be able to afford all these. I was going to show off all of Luigi's adventures right here and now, but I don't have the cash for it, so we're probably gonna have to read it during a live stream as well. That's kinda lame. When the light fades from Rogueport, a hero emerges, inscribing his name in legend. Super Luigi, all five volumes, now on sale at Toad Bros Bazaar. Oh wait, that was the last one? The Mustachioed Green Baron. Ha ha ha. Where is the Mustachioed Green Baron anyway? What's he up to? Does he have anything new to tell us? I actually don't know if he does. Let's find out. His party member is gone. I've been catching a breather here, you know, reflecting back on all my adventures. It's been a long road, bro. Wanna hear what happened? It's a pretty long story. No, we already know it. Oh really? You're lost, bro. Maybe I'll tell you about it some other time, huh? You know, now that I think about it, the whole game turned out to be, and also the first Paper Mario game turned out to be just a story that Mario was telling Luigi at their house. And Luigi stayed awake for the entire thing, so I guess that might be another minor detail in which they show Luigi's adoration for his brother, because Mario falls asleep through all of his stories immediately, but Luigi stayed awake for an entire R RPG that lasted for a year. That's dedication. Oh, Master Mario! If anything happens to me, promise you'll watch after the princess! That's all he has to say. Starting things off strong here in Poshley Heights, if you return here after you beat the final boss, look who it is! Well, this is awkward. Old girlfriend meets new girlfriend. It is you, isn't it, Mario? Well, it's been quite a while, hasn't it? I've come here with Bootler. Yes, a little vacation to Poshley Sanctum. I hadn't left the mansion in ages. I figured it was time to turn some heads on the road. <laughs> but what a nice surprise to you. Feel free to be overwhelmed by my beauty. And if you want to talk to Bootler... Lady Bo, your beauty is like the song of a nightingale in the evening. Indeed, I feel you've grown into a fine young girl who'd make your ancestors proud. I didn't appreciate this when I first played it because I hadn't played the first Paper Mario game, so I was just like, who the heck is this person? So it was really cool in playing Paper Mario 1 than seeing this character. I was like, oh hey, I recognize you! And then I got to go on a whole adventure with her, so I already had a connection to her that I was very fond of. But if you want to go and tattle, let's see what Goombella has to say about her. That's Bo. Wait a second, Mario, exactly what is your relationship with her? Tell me now! <laughs> I'm just kidding, I always wanted to say that. But you did go on an adventure with her, right? Tell me sometime, okay? And if you tattle Bootler... That's Bootler. 
He's Bo's butler. Mm, but what does a butler do exactly? It looks like he only listens to Bo. So I guess he wouldn't answer me if I asked. Oh well. Unfortunately, Bo is the only party member from the original Paper Mario game that appears in this game. It is actually hinted at that the, well, I guess Park carries also in the game because he shows up at the beginning to give you your mail, but aside from that, there's no one else. It is assumed that they were originally going to appear in this game either as Easter eggs like what Bo is right now, or they were going to be the main party members that would go on the adventure with you again because every single one of them has unused sprites that are in the game's code but just go unused except for Park, Harry, and Bo. But I thought it would still be cool if we had a chance to see them again. You may have seen a video on YouTube over the years made by a user named Skawo. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. He made a really cool hacked video that hacked the original party members back into the game and gave them a little bit of dialogue true to their original character, similar to the style in which Bo revisits you at the end of the game. I'd like to show you that video right now with the return of some special voice actors. Enjoy! Well, look who it is. Long time no see. In fact, I say it's a bit too long time no see. I'm traveling a bit myself. You know, seeing what's out there across the pond. Wait, is that a Goompa partner with you? I see, I see how it is. That's harsh, Mario. If you needed my help, you could have just came to me. I'd be happy to. No, really. Well, oh well. She doesn't make too many mistakes, I hope. I see some inexperienced tattlers out there, and man, I heard someone claim that Lakitu's through pipes. Isn't that hilarious? Well, good luck out there, Mario. You may need it. I think you know this guy better than I do, Mario. Oh well, it's Goombario. He doesn't seem to like me very much. Psst, Mario. Can you please not mention it was me who made that blunder with the Lakitu's? Thanks. Oh, hey Mario! Look, I know this is out of left field, but have you seen Professor Colorado anywhere? Ah, shucks. He always does this. I've been here literally all day. We were supposed to go explore around an ancient cave. Supposedly, it has lots of interesting machinery inside. Kind of strange, considering this island has been deserted up until recently. We're thinking it may have been made by an advanced ancient civilization! So yeah, what do you think kept him? That's Cooper, of Koopa Village. He's sort of famous. He's been apprenticed to both you and the esteemed Professor Colorado. Though, from what you've told me, the Professor is kind of a duffer. Do you think the reason he's not here is because he was too afraid to jump aboard Cortez's ship? Oh no, if you're here, he could also find me. Who, you ask? Bruce, of course. Even saying his name scares me a little bit, because it might somehow summon him here. <sighs> Some say you can't run from love, but I'm definitely going to try. Even if it ends me up in a place like this. That's Bonnet. She seems to be on the run from some Romeo. All I can say, I totally know the feeling. Remember when you made me go on a date with that one Goomba? He started sending me love letters shortly afterwards. Poor trees. Poor postmen. Oh, hey, Mario. Say, would you happen to know where Mr. Frankie lives? See, I've been told he lives around the East Pride Town, but... I only found a Goomba named Frank Lee. Apparently this Frankie is supposed to be a Mafia boss or something. Sounds scary, but alas, another letter to deliver. A postman's job is never done, after all. Even though I kind of wish it was in this case. That's Paracary. His letter delivering skills are absolutely outstanding. As long as you don't actually want to receive your letter, I, 
for one, am glad for email. So convenient. Still, I don't ever see regular postal service going out of business. Try emailing a package. Rather hard, isn't it? Oh, hi. I look a bit out of place here, don't I? Well, I thought Twilight Town sounded pretty dim, so I came to brighten the place up. And well, yeah, it is quite dim, but no one wants me to do my job. Do you think they're not taking me seriously because I'm just a kid? I'm not a kid anymore, though. I'm three years old. That's why. She's a little sparky. She's one brave little fellow to come here all alone. A bit hot-headed, though. Suppose that's just what happens to little sparkies when they get older, though. Huh. Oh my, didn't expect to see you here. Could say the same about me, huh? Well, I suppose so. <sighs> oh, what? Uh, no, it's nothing. You see, all the Yoshi children back on Lava Lava Island grew up. They're all going through their teenage mood swings now. Way too angsty for my poor nerves. So, I'm out of a job for the moment. I saw an offer for one here. But there's no way I'm taking care of that many children, even if they are adorable. That's Sushi, one of your past partners. She seems a bit flustered. Then again, most fish would out of the water, I suppose. Oh man, if it's not my man, Mario! How many years has it been? Too many, man, that's for sure. Me? Oh, you know, just having some fun, you know, a bit of a man time, you sometimes got a man. Man! Wish this place flew a little bit lower, though. Like, in the clouds. Do you agree, man? Preach it, man. Although, I guess I see why they don't do that. It's kind of hard to see people beating each other up in the fog. That's Lucky Lester. Er, Michael. Mm, wait, Spike? Whoever he is, he seems fairly laid back. Really envy him, that cloud. He'd be so nice to ride one around. Do you think they're for sale? And with that, the voice actors are finally free! How wonderful! Oh my god, they're all finally free from their uh, voice acting prison, I guess. I don't even know how to say it, but like, the voice acting is officially finished, and I cannot believe that I had such an insane all-star cast of people help me out with this LP. Uh, you may notice that the only voice actor that has two different roles in the game is Mr. Chris Mad. He voices both Black Lester and Gold Bob. Like with all my Let's Plays, I like to make sure that nobody voices more than one character just because I'm not really all about that. I want to have the voices and deliveries be as unique as possible and just have each LP be as big of a collaboration as possible. But for this one specifically, even though I knew Chris would be returning for this LP, I wanted him to voice Gold Bob. Why is that, you may ask? Look at this picture of Gold Bob, and now look at this picture of Mr. Chris Mad. I think you see why I made my decision. We talked to Pennington after you beat the game. Luigi, er, no, rather, I mean, Mario. How are you, dear boy? That's all he has to say. He's just forever in turmoil over the fact that he only just now realized that we were Mario. But that's about it for Poshley Heights, so let's return to Rogueport. But not before getting lots of spaghetti! Actually, you know what? Let's take the long way back. Let's go back on the Excess Express because there is something new for you on here after you beat the final boss as well. <laughs> oh, finally! Like more than 30 minutes later, he finally shows up! It's the only adult Yoshi in the game aside from Blue's Stampede. And when we had the trouble for working, it shook on every plane, train, and boat. I should be home with my new brat. I need to get back home. Oh, my lovely wife. What a weird thing to, for a Yoshi to say. Whatever. Look how tiny little blue is compared to regular Yoshi. It kind of gives you perspective as to how small this guy is. But yes, we finally stinking found him. Is it worth it? 
No, not at all. Even if you have Goombella tattle him, she has a specific tattle for all of the passengers. Like, it's all like, the exact same one. She always says, that's a passenger on the Excess Express. No matter who it is in this spot, she says the exact same thing. It was not worth the trouble. Our next destination is the moon. The teleporter is up and running once again after you beat the final boss. So let's go see our old friend Tech. Mario, I am pleased that I could see you again. I detonated explosives after you left to ensure the base would never be used for evil. Of course, I was destroyed in the resulting explosion. But one day I regained consciousness and all was as before. Yes, everything. I do not comprehend why, but as I regained consciousness, I saw a light and I thought I heard Peach's voice. Not really sure what that could mean. Either Peach did come back to the moon and fixed the entire moon base on her own. Possibly Goombella did it as well. Maybe she got some help from her. Or maybe Grotus did have a change of heart more than Goombella told us he did. Maybe the x knots repaired this place. Hopefully it's for better rather than worse. How is Princess Peach? If she is happy, then I too am happy. I continue to hope for the continued happiness of you, Peach, and all others. And that's all he has to say, really. Everyone made it out okay. Except for the villains and stuff, but whatever. That's beside the point. As it turns out, that was the last issue of Super Luigi. So we have all the books. There's only five. I thought there was going to be like seven, but apparently not. Thanks, stinking God, because I would not want to have to grind money to afford them. We have all the books, so how's about we give them a read? And then we will end this series for good. Except for the bonus videos that I said are coming soon still. Important things! Super Luigi! Book 1, super popular, now on sale. Have you ever experienced a time when no matter how hard you tried, you failed and the time you spend felt wasted? Only every day of my life. If ever you feel such pains, is that how you spell pains? Pains of regret, try to remember this tale. The story of a young man's quest to save a sweet princess. Literally, because she's a eclair. Super Luigi, Volume 1. The quest begins. The day dawned like any other, but little did Luigi know that the letter he was about to receive would forever change his destiny. Sir Luigi, danger besets us all on all sides, and we beg your help. The foul chestnut king has stolen our treasure, our fair princess. The letter was from Minister Crape of the Waffle Kingdom, a man aware of Luigi's many adventures. He knew only Luigi could save them. Charged with this dire task, Luigi wasted no time curtailing his heroic meal he was making, then he packed for his deadly journey. Knowing that his older, though less talented brother was out on a no doubt inconsequential errand, Luigi took a moment to leave a note. Mix a keel mango with a peachy peach to whip up a fruit parfait. These cryptic words were all Luigi wrote before leaving. Upon reaching the Waffle Kingdom, Luigi was greeted by pure misery and endless flow of tears over the kidnapping of Princess Eclair. Arriving at the castle, Luigi was greeted by Minister Crepe, who carefully handed him a compass base with only one intact section. Our land had a second treasure, the marvelous compass. Find its seven parts and find Eclair. So it began to be continued. Book 2, Manager's Pick. Super Luigi, allies in adventure. It's a little warm, Luigi muttered, the sweat dripping from his brow as he followed the compass up Rumble Bump Volcano's side. Must find the Grotto of Secrets while Luigi had guts to spare. He did need a guide, and he found one in Bluey, a blooper he met in town. Brave Bluey joined Luigi and instantly proved that he was invaluable. With his aid, Luigi bested a savage statue that protected the treasure. That treasure was none other than a piece of the marvelous compass, a piece that pointed west to Plump Belly Village. The second Luigi saw Plump Belly Village, he knew something was amiss. 
all was woe, and Luigi soon learned that the reason why from mayor, from the mayor, the town was at the mercy of his sinister servant, who demanded sacrificial lasses. Burning with indignity, Luigi formed a team of li li liberators. A fierce bomb warrior named Jerry joined his crew and chose, not surprisingly, to stick with Luigi for the duration of his quest for Eclair. Ford fortified by his allies, Luigi strode on into the, laid of the lair of the beast, a foul two-headed snake. No time to think. Luigi sprang forth. Twin heads snapped at his heels, fangs dripping venom. Then as one mouth gaped wide to swallow Luigi, the other crept behind. Our hero sensed the treachery and fainted before leaping. The heads collided, and the beast ate itself. Up the prize, a compass piece. The villagers begged their savior to stay with them, but a grim-faced Luigi pressed bravely onward to be continued. Book 3, this month's bestseller. The Voice of a Princess. Dauntless Luigi's next, next test came in the form of a... Came in the form of a cart race on Circuit Break Island, where he won both the contest and a compass piece. The race was fraught with danger, but Luigi pressed through adversity to win. All viewers were awed by Luigi's revolutionary racing style. The mechanic who built Luigi's racing machine, a buzzy beetle named Torque, was so stunned by Luigi's race techniques that he joined him. Re reinvigorated, Luigi set sail for Jazzafraz Town, where he made his stage debut. Hazy, a noted Daisy producer, gave Luigi a key role, playing the part of an earth spirit to pure purification, to pure perfection. Luigi stole the show. Hazy's faith and Luigi's natural acting talents were rewarded. The performance won a prize, which yielded another compass piece. Hazy turned from teacher to pupil, joining Luigi on his quest. It was at this time that Luigi's heart, usually draped in the cool comfort of a hero's resolve, began to warm with thoughts of Princess Eclair. This came to be the very this came to be because every time the magic compass pointed to a new place, her gentle words rang in his ears, touching him to his very soul. The voice spoke of eternity, of stars in the heavens. It wept for those blind to love. It gave comfort in the face of fear and loneliness. Though he had never seen her, our hero was tormented by visions of this fair-hearted maiden. All he could do was press onward. The compass pointed towards rapturous ruins. Only two parts of the compass were awaited, and Eclair had won. To be continued. Book 4, The Fan Favorite The Shards of Truth Foot sore and weary, Luigi finally rounded the rapturous ruins beyond Grimble Forest. Within them, time and space were lost in nothingness. Within the pale emptiness, Luigi found a young sleepy boy. Our hero called out gently, and youth woke from his long, long slumber. My name is Cranberry, and I've awaited for the last thousand years. The boy went on to tell Luigi the secret truths of an ancient land. He said that the marvelous compass had been created by the ancient Luf people, who used its powers of foretelling to rule the world. But the Luf Empire was then cursed by the compass and fell into ruin. The survivors dismantled the compass and hid its pieces. Cranberry was the last of the ancient race. His role was to wait until one with a noble heart came to take the burden of the future. None but Luigi could have shouldered this weight. The boy gave Luigi the compass piece and said, Fear the curse, but find your eclair. Luigi accepted the part. The boy's words burned into his brain, his duty fulfilled. The boy began to fade into the bleak nothingness. As he faded from sight, a look of joy lit Cranberry's face. As Luigi gaped, both boy and ruins vanished, leaving our hero in a dark wood. With six of the parts united, the compass now pointed to the final part, to the quest's end, to hate Son Tower. And then her voice spoke. Princess Eclair's voice begged for help from the void, pleading for a hero. Luigi's heart burst aflame to be continued. And number five, coming soon to theaters. Journey's End. At long last, Luigi crossed the threshold of Hates on Tower. Luigi rallied his allies. We will defeat the Chestnut King. We must. Friends by his side, Luigi at last faced the fell Chestnut King. But then he heard a voice and spun to see the fair Princess Eclair. She told our hero the painful truth. The evil Chestnut King was actually her true love, made monstrous by Crepe in a bid for the throne. At that moment, 
the villainous crepe appeared, the marvelous compass, please hand it over, and the Loof Empire will rule again. Mwaha! Luigi and co. were no match for the might of the crepe, their true enemy. But then, the compass piece in Eclair's tiara shone forth. It bestowed the future sight on Luigi. Knowing crepe's every move, he smote the fiend with his mallet, and with that, it was all finally over. Luigi and his friends parted, leaving the Waffle Kingdom in peace, but Luigi regretted not gazing farther into the future. He longed to see the Wafflers gathering on Princess Eclair's wedding day. He wanted to see her beauty and who stood at her side, but it was not to be. Luigi went back to his humble home, which remained exactly as he left it, a cold comfort for his heavy heart. Taking up a book he had been reading, Luigi tried to read, but his long trial had sapped his strength and he soon fell asleep. Luigi dreamt of his friends and his beloved Princess Eclair, and sleeping, Luigi spoke, I shall return. Yeah, I fall asleep while reading books too. But yeah, that's why he wouldn't tell us what really happened, why the ending to his story was so abrupt. I do feel kind of bad for the guy, I'll admit, but I really, really will never stop wishing for this story to become a full-fledged game. I hope we get to see Luigi's adventure firsthand. I truly do. But with that, I believe we are just about done here. For now, at least. You know the drill. We're going to be back for some streams. And for one more bonus video where we show the ultimate fight. I don't know what else to say really. This game is incredible. I'll always enjoy going back to it. My last few playthroughs with this game were kind of unfortunate. I never got to finish the game and they just revolved around really bad times in my life. But now that I finally got to revisit it for a let's play, I could look back on this game with much happier memories. This game will always be a beacon of hope for me. It will always be a bright light with all of its characters, and especially one in particular, who I adore and look up to and relate to immensely. I truly hope we get to see them again. Whether it be a remake, or possibly a new story with their return. But for now, it's time to rest. Thank you all for watching my Let's Play of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Next time we meet, we'll be at the bottom of the pit of 100 trials. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night. Thank you.